Hey everyone, this time on Tim Talks Audio, we're checking out the updated start page inside Studio One version 6. Studio One version 6 just came out and there are a ton of updates, so you're going to be seeing a lot of the new features in some upcoming videos. We're still going to get into plugin reviews and methods that you guys have come to know from this channel, but because the new version is out, we want to catch everyone up on some of the things you can do. And most importantly, we're going to get into the start page and its updates. So. Let's take a look. Okay, so here it is. This, this is the updated start page for Studio One. Yours may look a little different. I'm running Studio One Professional because I have a Sphere membership. I also put my logo in, the artist profile, which you may or may not have done in older versions. This has been there for a while, but really we're going over the updates to the start page. Let's do that by going up to the top left. In the top left, you can see we have the audio batch converter. If you're a Studio One Sphere member or you have professional or have purchased batch converter, you can quickly and easily access it in the top left here. Next to that is the SoundCloud integration. If you've hooked up Studio One to your SoundCloud account, you can manage everything through this button right here. It just opens up the client for SoundCloud. Then without even getting into sessions, if you just need to get in and maybe make some new macros or adjust some of the ones you have, your macro organizer button is also up here in the top left. Now, if we travel over to the top right, you'll see our profile over here. So here's one of my photos and it gets you into your PreSonus account. If you click on this, you can sign out if you need to do that for any reason or go in and edit your profile. Next to that is the transfers button. This is whenever you download any kind of content through Studio One or through PreSonus. So if I click on this, you'll see the pop-up come up. Here's a demo song that was installed as a zip file and the reference manual because that's great to have. Why not check the manual for something sometimes? Next to that is this home button, which actually brings you back to the start page. If you're ever just kind of navigating around and you need to get back to the start page, the home button on the top right here, this will bring you back to the page we're on right now. And next to that is the documents, but it's also the quick change. I know a lot of people and maybe you don't know this, but you can have multiple songs or multiple projects open at the same time. And you can quickly and easily swap to those other open projects. And you'll see that with the documents button here, it'll actually turn into almost like a little stack of papers and you can go in and switch what session you're in with this button. Now we'll come down to the main portion of the window. Obviously we have our recent files, which will be your most recent files. I do most of my work within the songs section. So here's also a tab here for songs. And these are just the ones I have open most recently. Then you have projects and shows. I don't have any projects or shows on this machine, but if you did and they were relatively recent, you would see them here. Most of the time though, I'm on recent files. All right, while we're looking at our recent files, there are some minor modifications in here. And you guys may or may not know that you can pin different songs. If I actually kind of go in and say, well, this song, this T comp DA, you know, something I was working on. If I want to make sure that this stays on my recent files, I can pin it to my recent files list. And if I go ahead and clear the list, this will remain. After you've pinned some recent files, you'll actually get this new section here, which shows you all of your pins because it won't leave them at the top. If you start opening up other projects, the pinned songs or files that you have will move down in your list, but they've now added this pinned section on top where you can drop it down and then quickly and easily recall any kind of pinned project you may have been working on. Everything else from this section is the same, tells you how long it's ago you've been working on that said project. Uh, but really, let's do this. I'm going to right click on this recent file. And it's now telling me a ton more information. Here's all of my previous versions. And these are auto saves. But right here, it's telling us information about the session. So it was recorded at 48k, it's 70 BPM, it's 44 in the key of D. It's roughly a minute and 15 seconds long. There's eight tracks in it currently. And the last time I worked on it was May 20th of this year. Then down here towards the bottom, you can open with options. If a song or any kind of recent file is giving you troubles and making Studio One crash, you can open that 
project with options and maybe disable your plugins. This way, at least you can get in and bounce all your audio, make a new session and go back in and work from there. So whenever you need to, instead of it just continuously crashing, if it happens, then you can open those different recent files with options and disable some things to try and get back into your sessions. You can also show in Explorer, or this would be show in Finder if you're on a Mac OS, and remove from recent files list. So these two are pretty much the same like we saw before, but open with options and having session info on top, very nice to have. Now let's get to the artist profile section in the middle, and there's a nice little addition we have going on here. Obviously, we've always been able to upload any kind of photo we want, and that will imprint onto our files themselves. And you may have seen this if you've ever exported an MP3 where you didn't add any kind of artwork to that export. So here's my name. If I was working in a certain genre, I would put that here, a section for my website. But if you work with different bands or multiple artists and you work with them frequently, you can actually make different setups for different artists. So if I go to this little piece of paper here and I can make a new artist. So we can call this Killer Rock. Obviously they write rock music. And their website is killerrock.com. Then if I had a photo for them, I could upload it here as well. And every time I need to re-record or start a new project with Killer Rock, I can find their artist profile, which will retain all of this information and then embed it into the song or project that you're working on. So the metadata is already there and you can have a nice big stack of different artists. I'm gonna go back to me because I'm me. SoundCloud integration underneath that, you would get a lot of stats if you had this connected to your SoundCloud, like plays and number of songs, uploads, et cetera, et cetera. That would all populate here. And then like we've seen before, you can do all of your setup, your audio interface, configuring those, configuring external devices underneath, check for updates about Studio One. We've seen this before. Right-hand side, newsfeed. Hey, look, Craig put out a new article about Pro EQ3, but we're gonna actually do a dedicated video for that on this channel. So make sure you subscribe so that you know exactly when that one comes out. Now let's get into probably the most exciting thing about the updated start page. When we come up top to new, and we open this up. We're now greeted with this new and updated pop-up box. And we have lots of different things going on in here. Let's take a look at the left-hand side first, where we have templates and user. We'll get to user in a minute, but let's start with templates. So PreSonus has gone ahead and updated the available presets that you have, and the rest of this page will modify based on whatever template you choose. So right now we have record and mix. It's a new Studio One song. We can go in and we can adjust our settings on the right hand side, change your sample rate, resolution, time base, so on and so forth. You can even drag and drop files from your system into here. Maybe you're using just this drum loop that you found online and you downloaded it. If you drag it into here, it'll automatically populate that into the session you make. So it makes it faster and easier master and release. This is if you're going to make a project. You've already recorded your brand new EP, your brand new album, whatever the situation may be, or somebody has sent you this and you're a mastering engineer and you prefer working in the projects page. You can now use the master and release template to get you started in the projects. We're seeing the same kind of things we saw before, be able to change the sample rate. You can import tracks from a DDP image, which is very nice to have. And it just tells you on bottom, your file type is gonna be a project file. Rehearse and perform. This is creating a new show within Studio One. Same kind of things we saw before, import mode, set list, or stems. You have different options. We'll get into this in a future video as well. Then let's move on to the next one, play now. This creates a Studio One song file. So where we would usually record and edit and mix everything. But what it does now is it gives us options. If I wanna just play guitar, I can go over here and click on guitar and I can play a real guitar using Empire. I can have my guitar, plugged into my interface and it will create a track for that guitar with Empire already on it. 
Then once we're in the session, all we have to do is pick whatever amp and cab we want to use, maybe some effects, and then you're off to the races. You can start right away. And they also have it for drums with Impact XT, synthesizers using my tie, or right in with Piano and Presence XT. For things like piano, synth, and drums, you're going to need some kind of MIDI controller, maybe a keyboard or some pads or something that has all of that. You could use an e-drum kit as well if you're doing drums. So you have all of that stuff connected. Let's go even further, record now. This is kind of like some of the templates we saw before where it's gonna auto populate a number of different tracks within the session. Maybe you just need a single track. I got a voiceover gig, I gotta go now. I'm gonna record now, single track, let's get going. It's already gonna make everything for you. Guitar and vocal, exactly like you think. Here's two tracks, full bands. You're gonna get basically what you need for a full band. You may need to refine this a little, but full band, everything you need, you can get recording right away. If we go even further down, maybe you're into making your own beats. So here you go, make a new beat from scratch. It's blank canvas, ready to go. This is another song file. Next up, create content. Maybe you work in a podcast studio or you're thinking about starting a podcast, or maybe you need to score or write some music for a video file that you've been sent. You can come down to create content and this will give you a blank slate, but it'll also have the sections and the different tracks available for the video or whatever you may need. And really what we're seeing, and I don't know if you guys have noticed this, as we're clicking through, the apply customization because studio one is all about customization these days and being able to view or hide things you need to see or don't need to see. So you'll notice with create content, the customization of audio editing, which is one that studio one provides for you just kind of reduces things down. It gives you the basics of what you need for editing audio. If we go back to produce beats, we're back to complete where it has everything, all of the buttons of visible and available but you can also choose to turn this off by just unchecking this. It works with every one of these templates. Underneath create content, import files, we have the drag box right back here. You can drag in your video, you can drag in your audio files or your loops or your MIDI and get going right here. Then we scroll down a little bit more and we have the last two, PreSonus interfaces. If you have a different PreSonus interface, there's so many options in here, it's going to have it set up and ready for you. And then at the very bottom, you have the demo song from Alina Smith and Max Coney. This is called Rhythm of the Night. It's a song file, it shows you everything, and it's a complete song available to you so you can practice your editing, you can practice your mixing, you can practice your mastering, whatever you want to. Here's a complete song ready for you to just dive in and manipulate however you need. Now let's go to user. If you've created your own templates in the past using maybe my video to show you how to do that or somebody else's or you just already knew how to make your templates this is where they're going to show up so maybe i'm working on the podcast i work on frequently here it is i can start my session get into it and everything's going to be the way that i had it set all right we're good with this window let's get this out of here for now open does exactly like you think, you can open it from here if it's not in your recent files list. And then join is up here as well. Join opens up the PreSonus sphere. And from here, you can see all of the different workspaces and folders and everything that you have through your PreSonus sphere collaborations are gonna show up right here. So maybe you need to work on the session that was sent to you from your buddy. You need to go in and lay something in or maybe mix the song, whatever the situation may be. You can easily access that from join right up here on top. So there you go. That's just some of the new things inside the brand new start page on Studio One version six. Like I said earlier in the video, there's a ton of added features. So you'll be seeing a lot of videos highlighting just key elements of Studio One version six. That's all for now. If you found anything informative, please like and share the video. If you're looking to join the community or you wanna know about mixing or lesson information, join the Discord. There's a link down in the description. And if you have a question, ask it in the comments and I'll answer it in a future video. Thanks for watching.